Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I'm going to end the war between Commodore and Atari once and for all, kind of by modifying this power supply that I made a while back. A couple of months ago I made this dual Atari power supply that is a 5 volt DC and 9 volts AC power supply with two outputs that can power an Atari 8-bit computer and an Atari 1050 disk drive at once. This is quite a sturdy construction uh, with a nice case, but there's one thing that I realized and that is that the Commodore 64 actually needs the exact same supply voltages, 9 volts AC and 5 volts DC. And because both the Commodore 64 and the Atari 8-bit power supplies are kind of nasty regarding over voltage and overheating and things like that, I built this modern replacement. But uh, this is very limited in that it can only power an Atari at this point. So what I'm going to try to do is to add a connector on this that has detachable cables for both this configuration for the Atari 8-bit world and the Commodore 64. That's the plan for today. Let's see. By the way, obviously there's a whole video about me building this power supply. So uh, if you want to watch that, I'm going to link that in the description and in the info box in the video. So I thought about this for quite a while and I considered different kinds of connectors that suit my use case here. I considered using XLR connectors, which are super sturdy and there are versions that can take quite a few amps. Usually they are used for audio stuff, but there's also versions that are used to actually connect power sources. And then I kind of googled connectors. Uh, we need four pins for this. And there's actually something that is called an aviation connector. And that's a very sturdy connector with uh, different pin counts. There are four pin versions. There are versions with more pins. They are not very expensive. You can get really cheap ones on Amazon, for example. I'm going to link a couple in the video description if you want to do something like this. And I think these are ideal for this purpose. So I got some cheap aviation connectors. Uh, I think these cost about 8 euros or something. It's five of them, I believe. And these are both the male and the female part screwed together. Yeah, four pins, pretty beefy connections here. Screwed together. There's one part that is for uh, panel mounting, which just screws into a surface in a hole, basically. And uh, this other part that screws into this part. So yeah, I think this is a good idea to have multiple connections. These also are coded so you can't put them in the wrong way. There's a notch here that fits the notch on the jack. Basically what I'm going to do is just uh, wire this up to the power outputs on my power supply here and make two different cables for my two use cases. Obviously you can do this for other voltages as well. So this is kind of maybe an inspiration to do something like this yourself, depending on which computers you're using. Could use these connectors, even ones with more pins to power different things with different voltages from one single power supply, which could potentially be pretty handy for the retro computer user. In this case, I'm only going to make two different cables for the C64 and the Atari and the disk drive. Obviously, there's a five volt power supply in here, so you could potentially make another cable for any computer that uses a five volt supply. Your imagination and your use cases are the limit. I'm going to open up the case and have a look at what I did when I built this. I don't really remember. <laughs> I think this should be pretty straightforward to convert to an Atari and Commodore power supply. I'm not going to go into details about how I built this. You can watch the video. And I'm also not going to link any of the parts I used to build uh, this thing in the first place. Because those are linked below that video. Okay, so here's what's in here. We have a mains fuse, we have our mains IEC connector, and we have one output from 
the 9 volt transformer and we have one output from our 5 volt mean well power supply. This is the DC power supply, this obviously outputs AC. We also have a power switch here which also lights up, which is nice. So I think what I'm going to do is to just cut these cables that go to the outputs, remove these knots. Then I'm going to drill a hole into the back plate here for our aviation connector and connect that up and note down the pin out of that. Yeah, I'm cutting these. There's enough room here anyway. So I'm just going to cut these straight at the knots and remove these cables because we're not going to need those anymore. Open my knots here. This is a speaker wire actually that I used. Can even shorten these a bit, I guess. Let's remove the back panel. So I think I'm just going to widen this hole here for our connector. It should be, there should be enough room for that. And uh, yeah, obviously remove the rubber grommet that I put in there. Just use a step drill to widen this a bit and close this one. So this needs a 1.4 centimeter hole. So I obviously want this in here so that my notch is facing top. And there we go. Let's figure out a pin out. I decided to have my pin out like this. This is the solar side at the PSU. So uh, this side. And we're going to have our nine volts AC. The top two polarity doesn't matter because it's AC. And we're going to have ground on this pin and five volts DC on this pin. Pretty important to take note of that. Yeah, so I'm just going to wire this up accordingly. I think I'm using some heat shrink tubing to uh, insulate the contacts a bit. Should be pretty easy to work on this without disconnecting the rest of it. I am going to tin all the contacts on the connector and on my cable ends here. So we make a good connection. I'm going to add some heat shrink tubing, as I said. Some short pieces before I solder these to the connector. And this uh, meanwhile power supply is actually marked for polarity, so we're not going to run into any issues there. And that's our connector on the power supply side. I decided to just go full hobbyist on that one and just add some hot glue to the back of this hole to plug it. And I'm also going to add some hot glue to lock the connector in place. I'm also going to add some to the other connectors here just in case. <laughs> I'm going to let this cure or cool for a bit and then we are going to screw this back in and make our cables. Yeah, so here's our new backside. This is closed up with hot glue. It's nothing dangerous. All the mains connections on the inside are insulated properly, even if we poke around in there with a screwdriver or anything like that. So uh, yeah, we're going to make some cables that fit this connector and have the correct pinout for both our Atari hardware and our Commodore 64. So these connectors actually have a couple of small screws. There's a couple for a strain relief here. That's a whole strain relief bracket kind of thing. 
And there's one that holds the actual connector together. We're going to have to unscrew that. But I think I need a smaller screwdriver for that. That one fits. So this is our screw holding this thing together, I guess. So this locks in place. We turn it left and then we can pull it out. There's a locking mechanism. So we have 9 volts AC on top here. You can see the little notch that indicates the top. This is 9 volts AC. And we have ground here and we have 5 volts here. So for our Atari connector, we are just going to use uh, the wires we already have and solder them onto here. And we are going to feed this through here. Hopefully that fits. Yep, that just works. Stripping these wires, tinning them, soldering the correct positions on the correct connections here. I widened some heat shrink tubing with two screwdrivers and pulling it uh, apart. I hope I can shrink that back later. So I'm just checking the polarity of these wires. This side of the plug should all be positive. And this side should be negative. So this is our positive wire here. So plus five should go here. Ground should go here. And these two top ones should be our AC. I'm just adding a bit of insulation here. And let me slide this over and shrink it just to keep everything in place. And then lock the connector in place. And put the screw back in. That's now locked. And we should put our strain relief on here as well. Yep. So that's our Atari cable, ideally should fit into our power supply and yeah these are locked in place you can screw this ring down and this should be a super sturdy connection for an Atari but we want to make a Commodore cable as well first of all let's check the voltages so this should be the positive side which it is and our AC voltage it's around 10 volts, which is okay without a load. So yeah, this should be an Atari cable. For the Commodore 64 portion, I found myself a broken brick of death. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to cut the cable with the DIN connector from this one to make a proper Commodore 64 connector. Strip the insulation, check the pins, and connect them to my aviation connector. Uh, this is a completely broken power supply, by the way, and these are not really serviceable. Just leaving this strain relief uh, in there in case I want to put something else in there at some point. But as you can see, the case, these uh, standoffs are snapped off and things like that. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much gone. Not even a beautiful museum piece or anything like that. And I'm going to strip all these single wires. As you can see, there's four of them. And I have yet to determine which color is which voltage, but that's going to be a matter of using my multimeter. So on these Commodore 64 power plugs, these two on top there, you can see the notch again, that indicates the top of the DIN connector. These two are the nine volts AC, and we have our zero volts or ground here and our plus five here. 
So ground is on the bottom, plus five is here. So let's see which wire goes where with my multimeter in continuity testing mode. Brown and yellow are the AC, brown, yellow, and green is my ground, white is my plus five volts. So I'm going to hook that up accordingly to my aviation plug. That should be the correct pinout. Let's slide our peach string tubing over that and shrink it <laughs> and we should be good to go. Then it's just a matter of locking this in place, putting the screw back in. Yeah, and that should be our Commodore 64 version of this cable. So we should have our five volts on these two here. That's our five. And we should have our 10 volts or thereabouts AC here. Yep. Now the only thing that's left to do really is to actually test this with the machines it's supposed to supply with power. It's going to be a tedious task. It seems to work. So it does work with the Commodore 64. Let's check the Atari and the 1050. Oops. Yeah, that does work too. Nice. <laughs> this was kind of a shorter one, just an idea that I wanted to share. Maybe this inspires you to do similar things with the power supply to support multiple retro systems that you maybe own. This might be useful to just have your desk less cluttered or something like that and maybe uh, save some money in the process because as I said these connectors are not super expensive if you know how to hold a soldering iron it's not super difficult to modify your self-made power supply like this. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, hope this was informative. Thanks so much for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page and also your donations on Ko-fi and PayPal and elsewhere and for sticking around to watch my videos. I'm Jan Beta. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.